Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, soccer fans of all ages, this is Marciano Stadium, home of your Brockton Boxers. Tonight, we've got ourselves a good rivalry game on our hands as the Bridgewater Random Trojans come to town to face off against your Brockton Boxers. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Eamon Convey. Eamon, what are your thoughts tonight? Tremendous game coming at you from Marciano Stadium here. Brockton's been on a roll as of recent, and Bridgewater Rainham is not a team to turn your nose up at, as uh, signified by their 7-3-1 record on the season. Not a division game, Mad Dog, but a rivalry nonetheless, as Bridgewater Rainham is just up the street. And this is a big test for a boxers team that's coming off a tie to Notre Dame Academy just a few days ago. They need a win here, and they will be looking for one this evening. And Brockton will be looking for forward Jen Caruso, the electrifying star of this Brockton Boxers squad, to have a very good game. She's got 21 goals and 7 assists on the season, and she's only 16 points shy of getting 100 for her high school career. Not a... Uh, daunting task for anybody to to get to really it, it's quite the milestone especially for high school absolutely you know it's something to be tremendously proud of um, knowing Jen as we do I think she's more concerned with her team playing well the rest of the season and obviously getting a good seed heading into the playoffs but I'm sure reaching 100 goals for her career, or 100 points for her career, rather, uh, and breaking the Brockton girls' scoring record is something she's very interested in doing. And an interesting note right off the bat for Brockton, Jen Crusoe paired with Jamari Johnson up front instead of the usual Narita Montron. Very interesting. Johnson's been fairly effective for this Boxers team this season. We saw her score a couple of goals early on in some crucial games, uh, and she'll be, she'll be very well needed tonight. Uh, for this Brockton Boxers team that at times can struggle to score the ball outside of Jen Caruso's golden right foot. I don't see Narita Montrand on the bench anywhere for Brockton either, so she might be out due to injury or just couldn't make the game prior commitments. Spoke with um, Peter Caruso, the AD, before the game, and uh, without, without divulging too much, uh, he said that it was a non-soccer-related absence from this game. So take that as you will if you are a Boxers fan, and we just hope that Narita Montron can come back and make a continued effort this season for the Lady Boxers. Nice throw in on the far side there for the Boxers. All right, Sylvia gets it up to Jen Crusoe, who's got some room in the middle of the field. Held up a bit, and Bridgewater Arena able to stop that rush by Brockton. Morgan Grenier able to clear it out for Bridgewater Arena, and they're back with it as Liz Buckley able to turn inside on that ball. Good pressure there for Bridgewater Rainham by Nicole Garrity. Brockton wearing their home white uniforms with the red and black trim. Bridgewater Arena wearing their away red uniforms with the white trim. Ari Sylvia with the nice clear. That's a two-on-one for Brockton. Jen Caruso and Jamari Johnson. Caruso's trying to get past the defender, and it's going to be kicked out by the goalie. It should be a corner kick for Brockton. Excellent play there from Kaylee Sullivan, the goalkeeper, able to come out and realize that she wasn't going to be able to get hands on it and used a sliding move to get the ball out as Caruso goes over to track it down in the far corner. Caruso sporting a nice black cast on her right arm. Not quite sure how she injured it, but nonetheless, she's playing through the pain. As she has for the last couple of games. What I was told by um, one of the athletic director's staff is they're not sure what the problem is, and they're hoping by immobilizing it that they can track down what it is and, and get to... Um, gets figuring out what it is so she can be back to 100%. Always a good sign to try and keep your star player on the field and healthy as the Brockton Boxers and Lara Andrade defensively. Streaking up the left side is Nicole Garrity now turns to the middle. Good defense there by Yasmina Teixeira along with others. Del Pico controlling it in the middle of the field for the Boxers. 
And nice ball down the far sidelines looking for Kelly Blanchard, but unable to find her. And good defense there on the far side by Laura Andrade once again. Brockton's defense really stepping it up this year as far as the back line goes and holding off attempts on freshman goalkeeper Tori Viola. And that's been held down by, like you said, Liz Buckley and, of course, uh, Laura Andrade. Yeah, Buckley's really a tremendous force back there for the boxer. She seems to always have anticipation as to where the ball is going to go, always seems to be in the right position, and has likely single-handedly prevented quite a few goals from finding their way past Tori Viola this season. Little law ball up the field. Jamari Johnson giving chase with her good speed. Defensively there, Sarah Maloney, one of the captains for Bridgewater Rainham. So there's a throw in for Jamari Johnson, finds Del Pico. Two woman game over there. Del Pico with an aggressive move and knocked down on the far sidelines by Shaylin Breslin. It's going to be a free kick just outside the far side of the box for Brockton. Similar to a corner kick, a little bit better of an angle, so Brockton definitely looking to put one home here. Absolutely. Just more of the field to work with and more of an opportunity for Caruso uh, to do something with it as she tries to go to the far post for Ari Silvia. Defended well by Bridgewater Raynham. Lara Andrade. Giving chase as Caruso corrals it on the far side. Makes a nice move towards the middle of the field. Takes a touch towards the middle. Looking there for Janae Silva, unable to find her. And booted out defensively by Megan Garrity of Bridgewater Raynham. So Texera to Del Pico. Back to Texera. Back to Del Pico. Good give and go by the boxers. Aired out defensively by Bridgewater Raynham. Good job using her body defensively by Tiana Brooks. And a little bit too much body there as they move towards the inside of the 50 yard line. And it will be a free kick for Bridgewater Raynham. And Janae Silva now on the near sidelines controlling it. Tashara clears it out where Bridgewater Rainham receives. Johnson over to Sylvia. Back to Johnson. And again back to Sylvia. Nice little touch passes there. Stepped into by Grace Thomas. She gets the ball out of bounds. Bridgewater Rainham appears content to play keep away from Brockton, at least early. Both teams feeling each other out. Nice turn there by Caruso on the far sidelines. She's just inside the box, has two Bridgewater Rainham defenders who she splits with a beautiful move. And Sylvia gets it knocked down. Missed handball there. So the ref hold out the, she's okay. It was an accidental handball, so they do not call that. It always depends. That's sort of a judgment call on the referee's part as to whether it was just an inadvertent touch or whether there was some intention to it. Obviously, they felt that Sylvia did not have nefarious intentions there. Brockton's second corner kick of the game to be taken by none other than Jen Caruso. Nice boot towards the back post yet again, just a little over the head of Sylvia. And the shot out there by Lara Andrade. Rainbows harmlessly to the far side of the post. What are you seeing so far, Mad Dog? I'm seeing Bridgewater Random, like you said, definitely trying to play keep away. Um, Brockton, on the other hand, is trying to get the ball up to Jen Caruso and Ari Sylvia at midfield. And they, they're do, really trying to split the defense of Bridgewater Random. And they're starting to a little bit, as evidenced by the last couple of opportunities for the boxers. And here goes Shamari Johnson to the corner, but it's going to be picked up by goalkeeper Kaylee Sullivan for Bridgewater. Nice aggressive play by her once again. Keeper for Bridgewater Rainham in the purple jersey. Gets it out to about midfield. Take away by Del Pico. And again, taken away Morgan Grenier. Nice play by her. Fanned on by Samantha Sherrick. 
about half field. Bridgewater Rainham to this point hasn't put much together offensively. Most of their ball possession has been found in the midfield area. I'm sure they would like to try and spread it out as Brockton has tried to do thus far against them. Mackenzie O'Reilly out on the far sidelines. Her and Lara Andrade trying to link up. Gotten back up the field, Sarah Maloney. Brockton entering a very important stretch of games as far as playoff intentions go. Uh, they, of course, played tonight versus Bridgewater Random, and that's a big game. I know coming up, they've got Durfee next week uh, away and then home against New Bedford. So the next two games that the Boxers play are going to be against big three divisional opponents. You said a very important game for the Lady Boxers need to get tuned up before the all-important big three division games start up once again. Playoff seedings will be on the line. The Boxers are hopeful to get at least a couple of home games for the playoffs where they have played decidedly better than away. Kenzie O'Reilly looking for Jen Caruso, but chased out of bounds defensively by Shaylin Breslin, far side. Erica Santos. Johnson is held up, so it's going to be a free kick from Brockton. And this should put him in very good position for an offensive attack. Absolutely. Sylvia's got a good leg. She'll hope to find one of her teammates making a run down here. Jen Caruso looking dangerous right in the box. That's where the ball goes. Looking for Caruso, streaking towards the middle of the goal and unable to find her. As a good defensive effort there by Sarah Maloney. Now running out the far sidelines, Nicole Garrity. There defensively, Tiana Brooks. Good job to cut her off. And... It's going to be a free kick for the Trojans. Deep inside Brockton territory, just outside the box. So not necessarily a penalty kick, but pretty close to it. About as close as you can get a foul to be without it resulting in a penalty kick there. And stepping up to send it in is Sarah Maloney on the far sidelines. Low ball, Sylvia there defensively. And she is the one to get it back and boot it back to half field. Back in Brockton territory, Laura Andrade kicks the ball off the Bridgewater Rainham lady out on the far sidelines. Just about 12 minutes into the first half of this game. Still scoreless here from Marciano Stadium. The Bridgewater Rainham Trojans going against the Brockton Boxers in a game that has seen a couple of good offensive opportunities for Brockton and not much happening offensively for Bridgewater Rainham with the exception of, of that kick. Nice little play there by Nicole Garrity. Gets it into the middle for Samantha Sherrick, but good defense there by Brockton. Del Pico and others on the ball. Ari Sylvia. Tracking the ball, brings it up the near sidelines, looking for Caruso. Ball just a bit outside. Mackenzie O'Reilly over on the far side, looking in for Johnson, unable to find her. Brockton really trying to stretch out the field, trying some long lead passes, looking for Caruso up front. And Bridgewater Random starting to figure him out a little bit. Good defensive adjustments there by Bridgewater Rainham to sort of pack it in. We talked about those long lead passes that Brockton likes to find their streaking forwards. Sylvia corrals it around half field. But Bridgewater Rainham doing a good job as Janae Silva now, and Caruso's going to beat her to the inside. And good job defensively there by Megan Garrity on the superstar Caruso for the Lady Boxers. And this is going to result in Brockton's third corner kick of the game. At about the 27-minute mark in the first half. Injury timeout on Bridgewater Rainham. There is a player down at about midfield just inside of it. And 
This player is being attended to, hunched over in pain. I believe. I believe that's Morgan Grenier. Tough to see the jersey number from up here, but it appears as though she got bonked in the nose. We hope that she'll be all right. As the boxers are taking this time out to huddle up at, at midfield and sort of do some chalk talk. You like to see that if you're Admir De Silva. I think that's a sign of a well-coached team. As it was Morgan Grenier who was down, and despite being in a good bit of pain, she's able to walk off to the near sidelines. And a little she's woozy. Holding her head area as if she might have got kicked in the face and might have a bloody nose. Bloody nose would be the least of her worries. We hope that it's not something worse. I mean, so much talk of the agony and sort of long-term issues associated with concussions, and that's that's an issue at all levels of sport, and, and women's sports and soccer are no exception to that rule. So uh, we hope that Morgan Grenier is all right. And... Definitely one of the impact players for BR tonight. Absolutely. The sophomore midfielder and defender is the corner finds Sylvia, but goes off her head to the far side. And Tiana Brooks is going to get whistled. Nope, actually, that's going to go on Bridgewater Rainham, and what I think is actually a pretty good call on Nicole Garrity. Uh, despite Brooks using that same move that she was penalized for on the free kick just a moment ago, but this time Nicole Garrity was the one who committed the infraction by holding on. And the boxers control it on the near side in what is becoming a decidedly more physical game. As is usually the case, the lady boxers are quite a physical team in their own right, and Bridgewater Rainham unable to keep that ball in and I'm very willing to uh, to fight with them you know and, and be physical and that's that's a good sign and something that is never a good sign head trainer Jerry Connors on the sideline with Grenier doing the concussion testing yep and we we hope that Either she's able to pass and come back into this game, or if if the symptoms are there, that she will be held out and, and allowed to heal up. You only get one brain, Mad Dog. There are certain things you can uh, go about fixing, and serious brain issues are not usually one of those things. Bridgewater Rainham runs it out on the far side. And looking up the field for Nicole Garrity. And trade there defensively. Garrity turns around. Nice move down the far sideline. Shaylin Breslin. And who else is there defensively but Elizabeth Buckley. Good job to stonewall the crossing attempt from Breslin. No, quick inbound by Bridgewater Random. Almost caught the boxers off guard, but good job by Andre to get there defensively on the far side of the field. Just under the 25-minute mark remaining here in the first half. Still nothing, nothing. And Bridgewater Rainham struggling to get the ball in at times, and especially along that far sidelines. Not quite sure if that's a can be accredited to Brockton's strong defense or simply an inability for Bridgewater Rainham to get the ball in bounds. Definitely a different look for the Brockton Boxers tonight. Del Pico playing midfield along with Zaney Silva and Mackenzie O'Reilly. Ariana Silvia, who usually is locked down at that midfield position, playing defender for this one, along with Laura Andrade and Elizabeth Buckley. Now a shot right on Tori Viola, and she makes a fairly easy but still impressive save. Nice, uh, nice tough shot there for the Trojans coming from the middle of the field, but Tori Viola is going to need to be tested far more than that if, if the Trojans hope to 
get a goal in on her. Despite being a freshman, Viola has proved to be a fearless keeper thus far this season and a very important part of the boxers' 6-3-2 and two record overall this season. Be a throw in here on the near sidelines. Getting it in is Megan Garrity. Now coming up from her defensive position is Sarah Maloney. And noticeably, the Trojans are picking on the far side of the field as which to go with most of their offensive attempts. And there's a ball over the head, number six, Nicole Garrity. She's going to be whistled for offsides. That was very, very close as that was a nice ball from the middle of the field looking for Garrity out on the far sidelines. But the referee here on the near, near side felt that she was offsides. Mad Dog, that could have been the chance for the Trojans of the first half. That could have been, and the referee actually fishing, uh, ruling that the Bridgewater Random player pushed off of the Brockton defender trying to create some space. So he, he called that, uh, she rather called that one back. And uh, a good call at that. It could have gone either way as a push off or off sides. Yet another example of the Trojans' uh, willingness to bring the physicality in this game as Buckley steps up and gets the ball back to about half field. And the Trojans are starting to control the ball a little bit more in the offensive zone. And of course, just as I say that, it in fact goes out of bounds. Ariana Almeida coming into the game for Brockton. Michaela Robinson and Amanda Almeida are joining her as well. And Mackenzie O'Reilly, Lara Andrade, and Jamari Johnson will be returning to the bench for the boxers, likely just to get a breather. Very interesting what head coach Admir De Silva is trying to do up front in the absence of Narita Montron. Is really shuffling in a couple of different players that are going to try to keep up with the speed of Jen Caruso as Tori Viola charges out of her net to pick that one up in the face of a couple of Bridgewater random Trojans. Generally what you have to do when you have a dynamic player like Montrand who's out of the game, if you're Admir De Silva, that you got to find someone who can step in for her, and that's exactly what he intends to do as Del Pico controls it in the middle of the field. Gets it back to Ariana Almeida. Now up the field on the far sidelines is Michaela Robinson. And the ball almost squirts in. Janae Silva attacking goalkeeper Kaylee Sullivan, who was unable to get a hand on it. And that could have been very dangerous for the Trojans, luckily for them. It is kicked out of bounds. Good defense by the Trojans, swarming the box as soon as they saw the Brockton attack on their goaltender and able to clear that one up and out of bounds. As big as that goal is, goalies generally cannot do the entire job on their own. They rely on strong defense around them to keep them out of trouble for the majority of the time. And the Trojans have done a good job thus far this evening. So we have another stoppage in play. And There'll be a free kick here for Bridgewater Raynham. And getting some consolation from her teammates on the bench is the aforementioned Morgan Grenier, who appears fairly distraught. And that would lead Mad Dog and myself to believe that she has not passed her con concussion testing as Caruso with a ball in. And again, good defense there. Kaylee Sullivan's been bailed out by her defenders quite a few times there. As she's gotten herself into a bit of trouble as Caruso was bearing down on her but the defender is able to get it out. One thing that is surprising me so far, Eamon, is Jen Caruso, who we mentioned is wearing that cast on her right arm, not taking any prisoners, definitely not, not slowing her game any, as evidenced by her just bulldozing the Bridgewater Arena goaltender, and not afraid to be banged up a bit. 
Certainly not, and that's a good sign. If you're Admir De Silva, Caruso obviously the star player of this Lady Boxers team, and to have her not able to make the field would be incredibly detrimental to the playoff hopes of this Boxers team. But she, as we talked about before, she's had her issue immobilized on that right arm and not taking any prisoners tonight, according to Mad Dog. As there's a nice little header there by the Bridgewater Rainham player, and that is going to be a penalty kick. Yeah, I believe the official is calling for a penalty kick for the Trojans. Nope, and it was just outside, right the, box, outside the box, in fact. And boy, that was that was a pretty good stroke of luck if you're the Brockton Boxers. That looked like it could be called inside inside the box, but in fact it wasn't. And stepping up to take it is Sarah King. So Brockton allowed a wall due to the one foot difference inside or outside of the box. The shot is gonna be saved by Tori Viola. An excellent diving save going down to her knees was Tori Viola and picking that one up. Excellent read and Brockton's wall jumping up and down, throwing the, the aforementioned kicker for Brock, uh, Bridgewater Raynham rather, kind of off guard. Now we have a whistle. Is this game starting to get a little chippier, Mad Dog? Sarah King did a good job uh, to keep that ball low on the left side of the wall and maybe create a, uh, a struggling line of vision for the freshman keeper. And Viola stayed on her line, stayed true to the ball, and was able to get it. And now we have a kickoff. A jump ball. I've a never jump. seen that. I haven't seen that since my days of playing soccer. youth soccer. That's That was pretty impressive. So if you can imagine a jump ball in basketball, the same thing just happened on the near sidelines here. Uh, and the, each player, one player from each team stepped up and the referee dropped the ball in the middle. And Bridgewater Rainham was able to win the faceoff, I think, or the kickoff rather, but Brockton ended up getting the ball back. Eamon, I don't know whether I support that move by the official calling for a kickoff if you've got legs flying in the same direction someone could easily get hurt with both of those players wearing cleats it doesn't seem like a good idea to me it really doesn't i mean <laughs> in basketball you've got a jump ball but that's jumping up and down and using your hands to swat the ball and having your body to shield you away from any really serious contact not the case in soccer right and of course the face off in hockey is used with hockey sticks but a kickoff? Really, just Soccer. like you said, asking uh, asking for someone to get hurt in that situation. And luckily, no one was, as we're under the 16-minute remaining mark here in the first half. Score still nothing-nothing on BCA Sports. I am Eamon Convey, alongside the legendary Mad Dog, Matt Nelson. And an excellent game being brought to you by BCA Sports from Colombo Field at Marciano Stadium. It's brought the next couple of more substitutions. Bridgewater and I'm really picking it up in the uh, later end of this first half. Really stepping up their offensive game a bit. And, and Brockton, it's not that they're slipping, it's that they're really trying to take off some of that offensive pressure and focusing more on the back end. And you get, you got to give credit to the Trojans. I mean, they've they've made the last 10, 15 minutes or so really difficult for the Brockton Boxers, keeping the ball in, in the defensive end for much of the time. And I'm sure much to the frustration of forwards Megan Mulholland and Jen Caruso for the Boxers, they undoubtedly will get their chance at some point. But... To this juncture in the first half, good job by the Trojans to keep the pressure on. Caruso fielding the ball on her side. Whoa, nice move to move the outside. Little dipsy doodle along the outside. Cuts it up the middle. She's got a streaking Ariana Almeida who was intercepted very nicely by Sarah Maloney wearing the same number for the Trojans. Ari Sylvia controls it and it goes off the head of Maria Del Pico. Mulholland getting in the mix, but the Trojans able to clear it as Rachel Rego boots it up the field. Good turn along the outside there by Samantha Sherrick. And Yasmini Texera, who usually plays a forward position for Brockton, is down. She collided hard 
with Lara Andrade, I believe, and she is on the ground, writhing in pain, and that's not something you ever want to see. Texera is a very small person, so she ran straight into the back of number 23 for Brockton, Nadia Cardoza, and just went down really hard, and Brockton immediately calling to stop play. And a very quiet crowd here at Marciano Stadium, given the events of the last few seconds, as Teixeira gets up to her seat and is at least able to rise that far. And Jerry Connors immediately looking at that head area of Texera. And this will be an interesting situation. If, if my guess is correct, Teixeira will likely be held out of the rest of this contest as well. Give the trainer a lot of credit. That's a very hard decision to make. I, you know, we remember playing sports when you're when we were younger. Perhaps you got your bell rung. You know, when you're when you're young and you're playing sports and you're competitive, coming out of a game is the last thing that you want to do, regardless of how you're feeling. And good job by the trainer to ensure the safety of these girls out here tonight. As Teixeira is able to get to her feet. Texera walks to the sideline under her, her own power, holding her head. So she might be a little bit uh, doozy, a bit. And Jerry Connors looks like she's going through the same protocol as she did with number 24 for Bridgewater Raynham, Morgan Grenier. Who has officially put on the sweatshirt as it appears her evening is done. Unfortunately for her, Elizabeth Buckley lets a trail out. Rolling down towards the 13 minute mark in this first half. Still nothing, nothing in an exciting game between the Trojans of Bridgewater Rainham and the boxers of good old Brockton, Massachusetts. Throw in for the Trojans on the near side. Eamon, you mentioned Brockton, Massachusetts. We can officially start the pump up a couple of weeks from today. Brockton will take on the crosstown rival, Cardinal Spellman Cardinals, right here at Marciano Stadium. And that's a very big rivalry. We saw a baseball game earlier this year between those two pumped up as the Battle of Brockton. Well, two Mondays from now, the 27th, the Battle of Brockton comes to Marciano Stadium for a girls soccer matchup against Cardinal Spellman and it should be an excellent game. Both teams are very good looking to go deep in the playoffs. So it should be a very good game for Marciano Stadium. We'll have that game for you on BCA Sports and we're looking forward to it. Absolutely. You know, Spellman, Brockton High is always uh, always a big rivalry in a proud sports town like we are here in Brockton. It's you know, local bragging rights are almost more important than how you know how far you go in the playoffs and what your record currently is. You know, if you beat if you beat the Crosstown Spellman Spellman team, you know, it's that, that's a that's a big win for any of the Brockton High teams. And like you said, Mad Dog, we'll have that on BCA Sports, and we're very much looking forward to that game. And both athletic programs really in all sports, really blossoming in, in the last two or three years. Of course, Cardinal Spellman winning the Division Three state championship last year for men's basketball, going all the way and winning it against Tingsboro at the DCU Center in Worcester. And Brockton consistently in the playoffs for every sport. Yep, two good teams. You know, the rivalry at stake aside, both two very good teams, both looking for a win, hungry for better playoff seedings and that will likely shape out to be one of the best games that we here at BCA Sports cover this season. As the ball will be thrown in for the Trojans on the far sidelines. Rolling down towards the 10 minute mark here in the first half. Jen Caruso running for the ball. Shielding her off defensively is Megan Garrity. And good job by the keeper to come out of her crease and Get that ball away from the ever dangerous Caruso. Still scoreless, an excellent game shaping up here at Marciano Stadium between the Trojans of Bridgewater Raynham High School and the Boxers of Brockton High School. 
pretty pretty much evenly matched the last 20 minutes. Brockton really dominating the first 10 minutes, but they've kind of slipped off, and Bridgewater Random has is, is really stepped up in the last 20 minutes to make this a very evenly matched game. And subsequently, better defense by Brockton as well. Uh, the Trojans, obviously. So there's a long, long shot there from Almeida, and not really sure if the keeper needed to save that one, but it, uh, you know, you'd rather be safe than sorry down there, and that's exactly what Kaylee Sullivan decided to do. Now, I don't think that was necessarily the best move by Sullivan for Bridgewater Random. Is Brockton is now going to have a corner kick, the their fourth of the night, to be taken by the very dangerous Jen Caruso. The corners off her foot thus far in this game have been quite accurate as well, looking looking usually to the back post, but unable to find a head to strike it into the net thus far. And Sylvia is going to make a run here to the near side. And the interesting decision from Caruso to curve this out towards midfield. And not finding and anyone. going to take a one-timer. It's going to be deflected away by one of Bridgewater Reno's defenders. And it's eventually going to go out of bounds off of Brockton. Good little set piece there for Brockton, unable to find Sylvia or any of the other lady boxers, but nonetheless a decent chance. In the middle for Del Pico. Looks back over to Amanda Almeida. Finds Ariana, middle of the field. Scratch that, Michaela Robinson. Comes back to midfield with the Trojans and controlling it there for them is Katrina Burke. Number three for Barack and Anya Dos Reis, stretching, getting ready to come in the game. Yep, and uh, <laughs> looks like down here on the near sidelines, Yasmina Teixeira is lobbying quite hard with the trainer to get back in the game, and they're sort of having a playful conversation at this point. It appears as though Head trainer does not want her to go back into the game, and obviously to share his lobbying for the other side. Good boot up the field there by Buckley. And this game's significance is very high. There is college scouts in the building scouting out not only Jen Caruso, but a number of other Brockton boxers as well and I believe a few of the Trojans. So Yasmini Taxera definitely wants to get back out there and, and show the college scouts what she can do. It's not simply just about getting back in the game. You know, towards the end of the season, when recruiting really starts to pick up is when these players need to be in prime form and more importantly, just need to be on the field and show that, you know, they have the sort of, you know, the staying power that is needed for these big time college athletic programs. As here is a beautiful flipping header and it's going to trickle just wide. Megan Mulholland by the back post, nearly able to clip that into the goal, but just unfortunate. That is a trip. We've seen that a few times this season, Mad Dog, and I'll tell you what, it doesn't get any less impressive. We saw last season under head coach Andrea Tassinari the flip, as I call it, the inbounding where the player flips and throws the ball over her head, gaining more momentum. They did that a lot last season, not so much this season under head coach Admir De Silva, but a couple of the Brockton boxers perfecting the art last year. And I've only seen, I believe I've only seen it one other time this season here at Marciano Stadium. Always something interesting. Always something interesting. Really quite a sight to see. Uh, someone doing a front flip and using the ball as... Uh, sort of the flipping point, if you will, and then coming back over the top and launching the ball in one motion. Really more gymnastics than soccer. Uh, and that's really just tremendous. I believe we've only seen Was that Amanda Al on the flip? I think it was Almeida, actually, on the far side, coming up from the defensive position. And I believe she's the only one that we've seen I believe she's the only one we've seen do it this season. Yeah, that was number 15, Amanda Almeida, with that flipping header. I could be wrong, but I believe she is the one that we saw do it in previous games. 
And it, it was not present in the first few, so it makes you wonder if that's something that she had to lobby Coach Admir De Silva to let her do. It, it definitely adds a fun aspect because everyone's like, what's going on? She's like upside down doing a flip. This is soccer, not gymnastics. Ari Sylvia taking it towards the middle of the field, looking up the far sidelines for Michaela Robinson, defended well by the Trojans. And Eamon, as we cross the five minute remaining mark here in the first half, we've seen just about everything in this first half. We really have, been, been very exciting despite, despite the lack of scoring. And if one team could just put a goal in, we may have just about seen everything that is possible to see in a, in a women's varsity soccer game this evening, Mad Dog. Del Pico controls now. Solid defense by the Trojans. It's going to be Amanda Almeida throwing it in on the far side. We'll see if she does the flip again. No such luck this time. As the ball is up the far sidelines, good job to cut it back to the middle of the field for the Trojans. And no one home on that pass. Good job by Sylvia. As you mentioned, Mad Dog, playing more of a midfielder defensive role than I think she's accustomed to playing, but doing an admirable job this evening in helping to keep the Trojans off the scoreboard to this point. And Ariana Sylvia, one of the captains of this Brock and Boxer squad, doing an excellent job breaking up that pass by Bridgewater Raynham and really stopping herself from having a very heavy collision with the Trojan player that was trying to track that pass down. And we see on the near sidelines here that Yasmina Teixeira is putting on her sweatshirt much in the way that Morgan Grenier did. And it appears that both teams have lost a player for the remainder of the evening. And a very important player for both teams at that. Star players, if you will, for each squad have been, uh, have been taken out of this game by an unfortunate collision, both pretty violent in nature, and uh, good to see the trainers erring on the side of caution here and making sure these women get back healthy before they are allowed to return to the field. As chasing it down is Anya Dos Reis, unable to get there. Got about two and a half minutes left, still scoreless and excellent game thus far from Marciano Stadium. We've seen just about everything except a goal. Still waiting on that goal to go in the back of the net, but like you said, Mad Dog, very exciting game thus far. Both teams evenly matched. The records showed that coming into this one, and the talent on the field has not disappointed in that category as we've had a very evenly matched contest this evening. And Eamon, one thing that I think is going to happen, whoever scores that first goal will win this matchup with the way the defenses have played tonight. It, it would appear so. Both teams packing it in defensively, not giving each other very many opportunities offensively. And, you know, at, at this point, that, that seems like a very good assumption that this one will be won by the team who is ever first able to net a goal. So we're under two minutes, official time is kept on the field by the people in yellow. And not much action from the referees this evening. I believe they've done a good job of keeping the whistles in their mouths, except when they've had to perhaps stop the game for injured players. Not too many uh, penalties or free kicks awarded here. We applaud the referees for doing that. Very, very much the opposite of the gentleman's game we saw here on Monday night between Madison Park and Brockton where the ball was stopped by the officials more than it was in play. Really oh, just a nasty an, collision. Went flying end over end down there for Brockton was Elizabeth Buckley. Oh, excuse me. 17. Lara Andrade. And she collided with number 16 for Bridgewater Raynham, I believe, and that is Samantha Sturdivant. Quite a last name, Sturdivant. That's a new one, always something new here, BCA Sports. 
And that. Ryan Almeida is going to get whistled for a pull down. As the referee checks her timekeeper. And not much time left in this first half. Trojans trying to make something of it. And, and the there it is. Blow. So at the end of the first half, scoreless in what is shaping up to be a defensive battle here at Marciano Stadium. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and for my broadcast partner, Eamon Convoy, we'll see you for the second half. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, soccer fans of all ages, welcome back to Marciano Stadium for tonight's game between the Bridgewater Rain Trojans and the Brockton Boxes. Scoreless coming out of halftime. An action-packed, action-packed, I mean tons of action in that first half. Uh, Mad Dog Matt Nelson alongside my broadcast partner, Eamon Convey. Eamon, tell us a little bit about that action. Really just tremendous uh, movement on both sides of the ball for both teams and no score to show of it thus far, but offensive chances for both sides and even better defense by both sides. Uh, two noteworthy items. We have two injuries and ladies that will not return this evening for the Brockton Boxers. Number two, Yasmina Teixeira is out. And for the Bridgewater Rainham Trojans, number 24, Morgan Grenier is also out. While no official word was given to us by the head trainer for Brockton, uh, it is decidedly obvious that both girls are being held out for concussion precautionary reasons and they will not return this evening mad dog so someone's got to step up for each team and that is a big loss for each team both morgan grenier and yasmini texera at least for the mo for the most part of the season playing in the forward position and definitely helping out their team's biggest there. Long run here down the field for Nicole Garrity, and the shot goes to the near side of keeper Tori Viola. Didn't really present an issue, uh, but a great lob ball over the top, and that's probably something the Trojans are going to continue to look to do as this half wears on. They need to put a little more pressure on Tori Viola. She's simply too good to try and take outside shots and not really get good chances again. She's going to stop them all. And one thing we're seeing for the second half for Brockton, kind of switching up the scheme a little bit. You got Jen Caruso up top. That's the obvious move. And we've got Mackenzie O'Reilly and Ariana Silvia playing behind her. Ariana Silvia switched from the midfielder back defender position to midfield. Now a shot for Bridgewater Raynham, and that's going to be the first goal of the game. Samantha Sherrick able to get the ball in behind the boxer's defense on the far side of the field. And Tori Viola just unable to stop that one as Sherrick got a really good shot off from inside the box. And Brockton pointing fingers defensively, but there just simply wasn't enough effort from the five girls in the defensive and midfield positions there. And the Trojans take a 1-0 lead just a minute and 20 seconds into the second half, Mad Dog. Didn't take long to find some action. Nope, and now with that goal, we've officially seen everything in this game including the two injuries and the incredible throw in on the far sidelines from Amanda Almeida as Caruso looks up the field aggressively on the first run. Nothing there. She was trying to find her running mate, Ari Silvia. And on the run again for the Trojans is Nicole Garrity. Forced to turn back by the boxers' defense, and there is there are runs being made up the far side of the field now, and that's something that the Trojans tried to do all of the first half, but Brockton did a good job defensively. And you've already seen one goal off that play for Bridgewater Rainham, and they nearly had another opportunity there. Brockton really just breaking down completely defensively here, not putting any pressure on the Bridgewater Rainham Trojans running up the field. And here we go again. This is number six. Garrity, once again, she's been a troublemaker all night and really getting some opportunities here strongly in the second half. Her cross is going to be picked up by Tori Viola. So Brockton really moving away from pressure on the ball, especially in the back end, and that's not necessarily you want to, something you want to see if your head coach had Mir De Silva. Absolutely not. De Silva's probably been telling his ladies to watch for those passes in behind and here goes Garrity again with a shot and just off the outside of the near post Garrity 
like a bat out of hell in this second half, really pushing for the Trojans and struggling defensively, really are all the boxers. To find Garrity. Garrity's been making a nice run. Her partner up there, Samantha Sherrick, who just had the tally for the Trojans. Again in on that run, and Brockton really struggling to pick up the Trojans here in the defensive half. And unable so far to, to get the ball into, into their offensive set thus far in the half. As now Brockton with a little run here. Mackenzie O'Reilly, Jen Caruso in the middle of the field, going to take a run. She's got three defenders on her, gets past them, and Caruso. Oh, excellent save as Caruso is sent diving through the air. She's a little bit slow to get up. She went head over heels over Kaylee Sullivan, who really made an excellent save. And let's talk about the magic created by Jen Caruso right there. Triple coverage, another defender on her left. And she was able to break through that and really get a very good offensive opportunity for the Brockton Boxers. All it takes is one touch for Jen Caruso. She gets to the middle of the field and turns the afterburners on, and generally she's running by everyone in her path. Really tremendous job by the keeper Sullivan there to slide in and not allow Caruso to get a good shot off. And even still, Jen almost got in there, and now we have another player down on the field for the Boxers. Ariana Almeida is down just inside the boxer's offensive don't zone, and she's holding her head. Boy, this has really been a, you know, a, a tough, a, really just a game of attrition for both sides as the injuries are starting to pile up, and you really, you just hate to see athletes going down clutching their heads. It's never a good sign in this day and age, and this is the third player in the game, and the second for Brockton that has gone down with an apparent injury to the noggin, and not a good sign. That's another crucial defender for the Brockton Boxers, senior Ariane Almeida. If she's not able to return to this game, Brockton is, is really going to be in a serious hole as they're already down one nothing at the 35-30 mark in the second half. And one good thing to note, trainer Jerry Connors working on the ankle area of Ariane Almeida. So maybe just holding her head in, in despair and in, in a lot of pain got to hope that, that that's the case. You never wish for an injury to anyone, but generally lower body injuries are ones that are easier to overcome than upper body and certainly head-related injuries. Hey Amen. I want to give a shout-out right now. Head trainer Jerry Connors really going above and beyond tonight. We've had two unconfirmed concussions, we'll call them, and now Ariane Almeida down with a leg injury. And this is not a good situation. Jerry Connors running over to get the cart and bring it onto the field. So a pretty serious injury to Ariana Almeida. And Jen Caruso really does it all for this boxers team. And she's down consoling the injured Almeida right now. And really just a, a tough sign for the lady boxers as they, it looks like, Jerry Connors is going to bring the card out here, and Almeida, Almeida may be done for the remainder of this contest as well. And in a one nothing game, that's a really tough blow to have one of your best defenders, and especially a senior leader like Almeida clearly is for this team. So the Brockton boxers, along with trainer Jerry Connors, carrying Almeida to the back of the cart where they will gently place her down. And that is not something good to see ever, is a player being carted off, especially in high school. We'll see how the lady boxers respond. This is one of those situations where things can either turn around in a hurry you know you see one of your teammates go down and you know you really want to fight for him and win this game or at least get back in it uh you know and it can also be a very deflating event for a team that's struggling to find their rhythm in this game and, and especially offensively so now more shakeups for the brockton boxes jamari johnson going to enter the game to replace the defender that was Ariana Almeida, so a couple of shifts taking place as far as positions go. And I believe we're gonna see Ariana Almeida, uh, Ariana Sylvia rather, move back to the 
midfielder's defender's position. You said it, Mad Dog. Shuffling has to occur when you have an injured player, and there was some shuffling done by De Silva early. Shanae Silva turning nicely up the far sidelines, looking towards the middle, and unable to find it. But you got to shuffle lineups when you have injured players, and obviously the captain, senior Sylvia, is someone that Edmir De Silva can count on at multiple positions. She's like you said, she started at the midfield, moved up to forward for a few moments, and now with the injury to Almeida, she's back protecting the midfield for the Lady Boxers. And one thing to note, the Brockton box is really looking a bit short on the bench. In addition to the injured Texera, there's another couple of undressed players for today's game. There's only two substitutions with jerseys on, and that would be number 23, Nadia Cardozo, and number 14, Michaela Robinson. So head coach Amir De Silva is really going to hope that there's no other injuries or reasons for any other players to have to come out of this game. He'd be really in trouble. There's a nice run in behind the defense on the far side. Look into the middle. The cross, and excellent save by Viola. The ball bounces, and it's going to go out of bounds. Boy, Kelly Blanchard had a beautiful chance there on the cross from her teammate at the back post, but unable to get a foot on it. And really more luck than better defense for Brockton. And they're really fortunate to not be down another tally in this game as we are at the 34-minute mark remaining in the second half. Bridgewater Random Trojans leading the Brockton Boxers by a score of one to nothing off of the very beautiful goal by number eight, Samantha Sherrick. And the Trojans doing a wonderful job controlling the ball in their offensive half. So far, the possession has been decidedly in favor of Bridgewater Random. Sorry, Sylvia tries to change that. Maria Del Pico giving chase to the far ball, and it's back up the field once again. On the case is Nicole Garrity for the Trojans. Crossing the ball towards the middle. Good job by Viola to come out and cut down the angle on that. Not allow the cross to go through. And Eamon, we're seeing the, the top pairing, the offensive pairing for Brockton. Running alongside Jen Caruso is Jamari Johnson, who was her running mate for the first part of the first half. And Ariana Sylvia playing back uh, back midfield again along with Maria Del Pico who was playing just regular midfield in the first half. She's now playing along with Ariana Silvia. Silvia gets the ball to the middle. Caruso shields off a defender. Two girls close on her. Patiently looking for... Angle shakes off a defender, gets it over to Silvia who crosses it looking for Johnson. It doesn't connect. And good job there by Jen Caruso to slow up the pace and try and find a, an outlet or a player running up towards her. And that's something that I think the Brockton Boxers need to do a better job of. I mean, listen, Jen Caruso is an incredible talent. We all know this. But so does every other team who plays the Boxers. They know that she is the main force offensively for this squad. And to this point, she hasn't gotten very much help from the other girls on her team. And really even... Uh, that's to say nothing of the goal scoring. I, they, they're not helping her as much as they should in terms of positioning, trying to get her a run, trying to maybe open the defense a little bit up for her, and really just a sort of troubling offensive display here by Brockton in the second half, especially in a 1-0 game. And we saw the same thing against Notre Dame here at Marciano Stadium last week. Notre Dame triple teamed Caruso all game and they came out with a win in that one. And there's no incentive for teams to stop triple teaming her. That's sort of what I was getting at. When you have other players on the team who can tape, take some of the pressure off, get some scoring on their own. But so far, that has not been the case for the boxers. And the very tight coverage on Jen Caruso has proved to be highly effective here for the Trojans this evening. It's Jamari Johnson now on the near side on the ball from Caruso. Defended well by Bridgewater Raynham. And taken away. Back up the field now, Sarah Maloney. And it'll be a throw in on the near sidelines here. And the Trojans looking very poised here in the second half. Obviously that goal gave them a bit of life as a uh, tough play there defensively by Laura Andrade. Knocking Samantha Sherrick, the lone goal scorer for the Trojans to the ground. And Sherrick's all right, shaking her hand a little bit. She'll be okay. 
And another issue that the boxers are running into, Jen Caruso, a very dynamic player. She's very fast. And the, the Brockton boxers don't have a lot of speed to match that. Absolutely. Generally, she's running ahead of the play and the one mainly creating it because of how much speed she has. It's a nice turn running down the sideline. Sarah Maloney oh, with a beautiful move. Stopped on a dime for Navari Sylvia and able to get around her. And over to Sarah King. Down the far sidelines, looking for Samantha Sturdivant. Unable to find her, it'll be a throw in for Samantha on the far sidelines. And throwing it to no one in particular as Tiana Brooks is there defensively. Buckley able to head it out. And a decent lob shot there off the header by Nicole Garrity, but Tori Viola with good presence in net to be able to look up and find that one. Just an update, Ariana Almeida is still on the back of the cart to the Brockton end of the field. And trainer Jerry Connors is joined alongside Almeida's parents, it looks like. And she has not moved from that cart, which is never a good sign. Nope, and it looks like maybe she'll try and put some weight on this leg at some point in the near future, but to this point, she has continued just to sit in the cart, like you said, Mad Dog, taking a load off that injured left leg. And Viola with a goal kick up the field here. Del Pico watches it go over her head. Shanae Silva had it momentarily, taken away by the Trojans. Now Mackenzie O'Reilly on the near sideline. Trojans collapsing on her. Back to O'Reilly, Jamari Johnson there offensively. And tried to play the ball with the inside of her right leg and it deflected off her and went out of bounds. Tiana Brooks gets it back up the field, has Caruso with it. What a heel turn by Caruso. What would have been a beautiful back heel pass to either herself or to Jamari Johnson, but there defensively were the Trojans taking it away from her. Number seven for Bridgewater Random, Chloe Santo Silva tried to kick that ball long, went off the top of her foot and bounced right up into her face. Always, uh, always a bad sign when you go to boot the ball down the field and end up kicking yourself in the face with it. Just a little bit of comedic relief from all the injuries tonight. And I'm sure Bridgewater Rainham, given the position they're in now, they're probably having a good chuckle about it as well as not really sure what Maria Del Pico was doing there. That pass was way too hard looking across to the far side of the field for Lara Andretti and just unable to find her. And the Trojans get the ball back in. Del Pico and Andrade there. Tiana Brooks boots it up. And there'll be a little push there on the Trojans. Grace Thomas, the offending party for Bridgewater Raynham. And if you're Admir De Silva, the girls got to start getting some offense going here and quickly at that. This will likely be a good opportunity to do so. And the boxers need to take advantage of every chance they can get as we are rolling down about 14 minutes gone in the second half. Goal kick, free kick rather, is booted away harmlessly. Ari Sylvia has the ball on a string. Nice little move there. Another update, Ariana Almeida has turned herself around on the cart as number six for Bridgewater Raynham is going for a run. Nicole Garrity again, she's been the troublemaker and good job by Buckley to step up as the fans wanted a foul on the Lady Boxers. It was not to be. The referee was right there. Obviously he got a good look at it. And Buckley doing a good job defensively as the Trojans nearly had another scoring chance. And the update update is Ariana Almeida has turned herself around to watch the game along with her parents. They keep pointing to something under the stands. So we'll, we'll try to keep an eye on that. Hopefully, 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 and I cannot stress that enough, is that they're not waiting for an ambulance. Which is ultimately the worst thing that, that could happen in the situation. 
you know, perhaps it would be a sprain or something like that, but generally when you're waiting for an ambulance, there's a pretty solid fear that whatever has occurred is a, is a serious injury, and, and we wish the best for Ariana Almeida. As we haven't missed much of the action here, Bridgewater Rainham going to have a throw in on the near side. And Garrity for the Trojans down there with, along with Tiana Brooks. And the ball is going to be booted out. And Jerry Connors is on the phone with someone. We can only we can only speculate as to who she's speaking with. But the fact that Ariana Almeida has not moved yet is somewhat troubling. As the Trojans look up, find Garrity on the near side. Garrity, not a very big girl, but extremely feisty. She has been very physical this evening for the Trojans, and there will be a timeout taken here by Admir De Silva. As Laborio Alfalma, the assistant coach, is giving some pointers to Jamari Johnson. And one thing, one thing I noticed there on that run is that Brockton is doing a good job of continuing to cross their forwards, but rather than stopping and looking back to the open side of the field once that movement has occurred, they're just continuing up and allowing the defense to run ahead of them and get in. It's sort of like a, a basketball break, if you will. You know, you make a pass and then you move, right? And you get it back to the person, you know, you keep moving the ball to the open space. Well, the Brockton boxers to this point in the second half have been unable to find that empty space in behind the rush. And perhaps that's what Admir De Silva is telling them to look for now because Jamari Johnson had a chance to get it back to Mackenzie O'Reilly on the near side of the field here. And she would have had a wide open run at Kaylee Sullivan. Uh, and Jamari Johnson just sort of ran, kept running to the far side of the field and was able to be headed off at the pass by the Trojans defensively. So a timeout called by Brockton with just about 25 minutes remaining. Bridgewater Rainham still leading by a score of one to nothing. In, I'll, I'll say a lackluster second half, especially compared to the first half. A lot of back and forth action in, in the later part of the first half. Brockton really dominated, so we've seen all phases of Brockton, they, they dominated for the first 10 minutes of the game. Then Bridgewater started to come back a little bit with the, the last half hour of the first half, and, and Brockton really slipping here in the second half. Aria Sylvia taking it up the near side, just a little bit out of her reach. And back defensively, Kelly Blanchard finds Garrity up the near side, back to Blanchard, nice little give and go. Tracking her down is Amanda Almeida. And kicks it off the referee. She was trying to get it out of bounds. And that's just really an unfortunate occurrence. And well, sort of fortunate for Brockton, actually, considering the throw will be about five yards behind where it would have gone out of bounds, nonetheless. A one time and shot. A good shot. Oh, off my the top of goodness. The post. That was way too close for comfort if you're a Lady Boxers fan. And what a shot there by Kelly Blanchard from outside the box on the near side. Ends up hitting the top of the crossbar on the far side. And from this vantage point, Mad Dog, that looked like a tremendous shot. It, it looked harmless when she kicked it. It, it kind of went high up in the air. I thought it was going to go high and wide. And then it really started sinking fast, so she put a little bit of backspin on it. It hit the top of the post, and instead of continuing on and going out of bounds over the top of the net, it took a weird bounce off of the post and stayed in bounds, and it was picked up by Tori Viola. Probably a facet of the amount of spin that was put on that ball by Blanchard, and that's likely the reason why it looked like it was going to sail and then started curling down towards the crossbar dangerously, but... As we said, hit the top of the bar and rolled harmlessly away. We'll have a goal kick here. And Bridgewater Rainham coming within about six inches from having a two to nothing lead about halfway through this second half. As the ball is booted up the field by Buckley, waiting on the near side here, Shaylen Breslin. 
Ari Sylvia for the Boxers. Kicks it away, but she gets it back defensively. Maria Del Pico with a turn. Nice look towards the middle of the field for Jen Caruso. Is going to make a run. Got a little space here. The shot's going to go off number seven, uh, number four, rather. Jamari Johnson with a turnaround jumper in the middle of the field and unable to get it as both of those shots were blocked. And down the field, Nicole Garrity. She's got a wide open run. Buckley coming in defensively. And just past Tori Viola. Tori Viola laid out as far as she could, sticking that right, uh, right arm out there. But Nicole Garrity would not be denied, and she has an assist now and a goal to go along with it as it is a 2-0 game at the 22-minute mark remaining in the second half. Matt, dog, just a great effort by Garrity there. She, she refuses to be stopped this evening. She is all over this Brockton Boxers defense in the second half, assisting on the first goal by Sherrick and now scoring one of her own. So she's had one tremendous game. And right before she went on that run, I was going to say, you said that Jamari Johnson had a turnaround jumper. They're, on the, they're in the wrong place for a basketball game. We've had a jump ball. We've had a turnaround jumper. We've seen a couple of three-point attempts. Like we said, just all, all sorts of stuff going on this evening. I'm surprised Garrity didn't try to dunk it over the goalpost, the football goalpost after that one. Do her best Jimmy Graham impression, as it were. And Ari Sylvia back on the ball for the boxers as the Trojans just continuing to keep the ball in the in the offensive end here. And Brockton obviously got to be frustrated with this as they nearly watched another, another goal go in before an eventual goal was actually scored on them for a total of a 2-0 tally here as we're at the 20-30 mark remaining in the second half. Jamari Johnson in the middle of the field. Jen Caruso takes it from her. Looking, swipes a foot over the ball, takes it to the outside, has a run, another defender closing. That makes three. Caruso still controlling the ball. Looks to the middle and a harmless pass there, controlled by Bridgewater a and and booted out of bounds by Sarah Maloney, the defense woman for the Trojans. Ariana Almeida has not moved since turning herself around on the cart. Still seemingly waiting for something in. Jerry Connors, the, the trainer, is still on the phone with somebody. And like you said, Eamon, we can only speculate. But it does not look good for Ariana Almeida. We see another flip. This one a very much more defined, and the crowd comes to life here at Marciano Stadium after seeing... Battling in the middle there. Ari Sylvia tries to get a shot off. The ball still trickling around, and good job by Kaylee Sullivan. That looked it's like... That looked like a handball in the box, Mad Dog. There was a Bridgewater Raynham defender down, and she appeared to be clutching the ball with her hands. Not sure if I saw that one right, but... The really signaled something. It looked like he was calling for a Brockton goal when goaltender Kaylee Sullivan came up with that. She looked to be at the goal line, if not a little bit behind. So the referee signaled something. It went completely unnoticed as now Bridgewater Rain is going to have a corner kick. But and Brockton coming very close. And now that I look at the goal down here where Kaylee Sullivan is defending, it does appear as though the posts are just a bit in front of that red boundary line. Perhaps that was one of the reasons that the goalkeeper and the ref were sort of confused as to what was going on there. And really just an unfortunate series of events. And now we have head coach Admir De Silva going out to meet with the officials at midfield to try to discuss what we just saw. Like you said, the goal line is a little bit behind the opening of the goal. So, Admir De Silva clearly thinking that Brockton scored. And we're going to have a stoppage of play with 18 and a half minutes left. And now Jerry Connors driving the card out. We're, Eamon, we're seeing everything. This Head is unbelievable. Jerry Connors bringing the cart along with Ariana Almeida over to the Brockton bench area. So she can be with her team. But God, that's that's just that's great teamwork there by 
by Jerry Connors. Not sure if that's the only reason, but it appears as though she wanted Amanda Almeida to uh, be closer to the action here. And actually, it appears as though maybe Ari Sylvia may need some work down there as Jerry Connors is going She's into her bag. And that is a huge loss for Brockton. On top of the other losses they have this evening. On top of Texair and on top of Almeida, now we've got Ariana Sylvia, who's the senior captain, who has played pretty much every position except for goal tonight for the Brockton Boxers. She's on the bench, and it looks like Jerry Connors is looking at her left leg. As down here during the during the little break, uh, Tori Viola made a nice save coming out of her keeper position to keep the score at two to nothing Trojans. But Jerry Connors is really earning her, uh, really early earning her worth tonight. She's been all over the field, assisting all sorts of different players from different teams with different injuries, and really just showcasing the whole bag of tricks. As down the near sidelines, here goes Garrity looking towards the middle. She's got it. And it's going to be a goal by... That's Sherrick, number two on the night, and that is a point hat trick for number six, Nicole Garrity, as she adds her second assist and has a goal earlier in the evening. And really just a clinic offensively by the Trojans here in the second half, and Brockton looking very much in despair out there on the defensive end. Definitely looking to stop the bleeding. They can't do much because they've got such a short bench. And now Ariana Sylvia being attended to by Jerry Connors. And Jerry Connors putting on some gloves, so there might be some blood involved in Sylvia's injury. Now, three to nothing, your score. Bridgewater Radom on top of Brockton. And the two mainstays in the Brockton zone tonight would be Nicole Garrity and Samantha Sherrick, who have points on all three of Bridgewater Random's goals tonight. And with 16.45 left, Brockton looking to stop the bleeding. And Garrity still hawking the ball. I mean, she is just in on every play for the Trojans and, and really just becoming a, a huge issue to deal with. That was what we talked about she looked towards the back side on that run. She stopped. She looked back towards the middle where there was some open space. And she found Sherrick, who was able to get in there for yet another goal. We're going to have a whistle called against BR. I didn't necessarily see a penalty. What I saw was the Bridgewater random forward, I believe it was Sherrick, kind of fell and took out the legs of Brockton's defender. Perhaps they called Garrity there for being a little too reckless. We saw that uh, in the boys' game, actually, and what, what would have resulted in a penalty kick but was disallowed. Garrity again with a beautiful move there to stop in the middle of the field, looks for streaking offenders in behind her, and she's found one down the near sidelines. Kelly Blanchard, who was involved. Right out in front. Garrity in the middle yet again, working, she twisting, turning. One timer from number 18 goes on Tori Viola and it's punched out. Excellent punch out by Tori Viola, number 18 with kind of a lob shot, Grace Thomas from about 30 yards out and Viola really doing an excellent job to punch that goal out. Now number 14 for Brockton, Michaela Robinson will come in and she looks to replace Tiana Brooks, I believe. Uh, it's Amanda, Amanda Almeida coming out of the game. Really interesting decision over there by Viola to punch that out. Not really quite sure why she did that. I, if you can punch it, you can usually get your hands on it. That one was certainly within her reach. I know Buckley was there defensively, but so was Amy Sullivan for Bridgewater Raynham is, uh, boy, Garrity really just making her presence felt. Nearly had another run right up the middle at Tori Viola, and fortunately for the boxers, she was not able to do so but really just allowing Nicole Garrity to operate wherever she wants. And now Buckley's pointing her out like, hey, this is the one who's causing us trouble this evening. We need to do something about that. And right on cue, Tiana Brooks goes in and gives her a little shove in the back as she's going for the ball. But Garrity won't be denied. And now she goes by Buckley on the far side. Cross is going to be broken up by Laura Andrade. <laughs> And good defense there as the Trojans were threatening yet again and really just a, a miserable display by the Brockton Boxers defensively. And here, once again, good job by Tori Viola to slide out. Kelly Blanchard 
seeking by the near post for yet another tally for Bridgewater Rainham. And this one's starting to get ahead of him as Ari Sylvia is now walking back to the locker room and she visibly has blood on her shirt, Mad Dog. So that is a really, really tough blow for the boxers who are already shorthanded, now without one of their captains. And this one for Admir De Silva and his group will really be a trying test the last 13 minutes of this second half. And Ariana Almeida still has not moved from the cart. The cart is moved, but Almeida has not moved from her position. Now watching the game. And tying up an ice bag, it looks like. So the fact that the ambulance hasn't showed up is somewhat somewhat less troubling than we originally thought. And the fact that she's just icing it on the sidelines leads me to believe that perhaps it's just a sprain. Uh, certainly we wish her the best and that she will be able to return as she is an integral part of the defense for the Brockton Boxers and clearly they could be using her this evening. We see on the bench number 16, Michaela, uh, Mackenzie O'Reilly rather, sort of consoling number 15, Amanda Almeida. Not really sure what's going on down there but it, it definitely looks like Almeida is been shaken up in some way, shape, or form, either physically or mentally, and O'Reilly just kind of consoling her, telling her everything's going to be okay. Just being a good teammate. You got to be there on the field, and you got to be there off the field as well. And obviously, O'Reilly showing that as the Trojans get a corner in, and just over the head of Samantha Sherrick, really looking for a hat trick there on that one. And if it would have found her head, it very well could have been. And Brockton yet again dodging another bullet in the second half as they've already taken three. And there's 12 minutes remaining in the second half. Three nothing Trojans. And there's Garrity again. Her and Buckley have been battling all night. The best defender for the boxers and clearly the best offensive player for the Trojans going at it yet again. Lara Andrade on the near sidelines. Unable to find who she was looking for. Garrity, very unselfish play, getting it back to the middle, and she's going to get a chance here. Thank yeah, God for the head of defensive Buckley. Defensive breakdown, number six for Bridgewater Arena, Nicole Garrity, who's been troubling for the Brockton boxes really for the most part of this game, launching what seemed like an innocent shot, luckily hitting Buckley and going out of bounds. I think that would have been a fourth goal for Bridgewater Arena. And it would have been a third goal for Sherrick, too. That would have been a nice little hat trick on three distinctly different goals, but two of which, three of which actually being set up by everyone, or by being set up by Garrity, rather, every one of them. As that was an interesting play there, nearly another goal for Bridgewater Rainham, but. Something tells me that would have been disallowed for a player running into freshman goaltender, Tori Viola. It begs the question as to whether, if Viola comes out of her crease to play that ball, if there's any sort of allowance for some contact by an offensive player. Not exactly sure of those rules. Now yeah, this game kind of picking up, getting a little bit chippy. Bridgewater Rams gonna have a free kick from about the 30 yard line of the football markings. It's gonna be taken by number four, Sarah Maloney, who curves it towards the net off the head of one of the boxers defenders. And now it's gonna be a corner kick for Brockton, uh, for Bridgewater Rams rather. And just a, a mental breakdown by Tori Viola, just letting that ball roll out of bounds. And Bridgewater Random with another opportunity as we cross the 10 minute mark in this second half. And here's the kick from the near side corner and ends up going behind the goal. Had a nice little bit of bend on it, but bent a little bit too much. Ariana Sylvia back on the sidelines. And she's got her jacket on. I'm guessing that she is done for the evening as well. Yet another crucial loss for the Brockton Boxers. Mackenzie O'Reilly finding her way back into the game. She will replace number 
see who that is. Megan Mulholland coming out of the game now, talking with Edmir Da Silva. Megan, of course, the sister of Felicia Mulholland, who a little bit before your time was a very short and very fast player. When I tell you she was fast, she was probably goal line to goal line. Jamari Johnson with a run in behind the defense. And good job getting back by Bridgewater Raynham. Sorry to interrupt you there, Mad Dog. A little action. A little bit of action. Brockton really trying to step it up. Laura Andrade throws it in to Michaela Robinson. Now Jen Crusoe in the middle of the field. It's going to be broken up and picked up by Maria Del Pico. And Ari Silvia is actually back down on the sidelines here, now wearing the number 12 of Erica Santos. Obviously, you can't go back in the game if you have blood on your shirt. So she has changed jersey numbers and is lobbying Edmir De Silva to get back into this game for obvious reasons. As O'Reilly drops it in, looking for Caruso, unable to find her. Kicked out of bounds to the near side. Shaylin Breslin airing it out. And here comes Ari Silvia. She will not be denied. And she is wearing the number 12 jersey and number 17 entering the game as well. Lara Andrade to replace number 23, Nadia Cardozo. So yet another shifty, not really a shifty move, but Admir De Silva having to shift some resources around as Ariana Silvia wearing the number 12 jersey of Erica Santos makes her way back into the game. And there was a handball there by Del Pico in about half field. It'll be a free kick as we are under the seven minute mark remaining here in the first half. Head trainer Jerry Brooks relocating over to the near left corner of Marciano Stadium. Tori Viola with a nice save there on a very Easy attempt by the Trojans. Viola clears it out. Kenzie O'Reilly over to Tiana Brooks. To go out of bounds. Nice play by a undressed member of the Brockton Boxers on the bench who just kind of reached up and speared that ball out of midair. Garrity with nice poise has Sherrick in the middle of the field. Tiana Brooks able to get there. That could have been dangerous. And boy, Garrity really has a sense of where her teammates are going to be, makes passes before they even move into position. And really just, just a one-woman show here for the Trojans this evening, contributing on all of the scoring opportunities, including adding one herself to bolster this 3-0 lead for the Trojans. And... She's continuing to keep the pressure on the Brockton ladies. Ball in on the far sidelines. Kicked back out of bounds by Amy Sullivan. Five and a half minutes to go in the second half of action. Three to nothing to score. Bridgewater on top of Brockton. Mad Dog Matt Nelson alongside Eamon Convey bringing you all the action from Marciano Stadium, there's been a lot of action, especially injury-wise, which is never a good thing. A couple of concussions and, of course, the leg injury to Ariana Almeida. She still has not moved from that cart. And the most recent injury was to Ariana Silvia, who had a bit of a bloody nose. And she has re-entered the game, luckily. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good Caruso kick. Caruso just can't connect on the back end of the pass. And Caruso will chase it down to the corner. It's actually Janae Silva out there on the far sidelines. Ari Silvia able to put a nice cross in there to the back post. But Janae Silva was walled off defensively and really unable to get a solid foot on the ball. And the Trojans continue to possess it around half field. Running up with it is Kelly Blanchard looking for Garrity. Blanchard back to Garrity and good job to step up defensively by Elizabeth Buckley. But it's going to be whistled off sides regardless. 
And I don't know about that offsides call, but I'm sure the Brockton Lady Boxers will take it in any case. Kenzie O'Reilly. Now Garrity for the Trojans. Playing a ball down the near sidelines to Blanchard. And Blanchard content to just waste some time and kick it up the field as we are under the four minute mark remaining. Jamari Johnson running up towards the ball. Blanchard to Garrity. Garrity back to her defense woman, Shaylin Breslin. Blanchard's got it again, and Garrity looking to come in behind, and good job by Buckley to shield off the streaking Garrity and allowed Tori Viola to grab that ball as yet another dangerous play fizzles out for the Bridgewater Random Trojans. And Bridgewater Rainham clearly very happy to get the ball, waste a few seconds, and then boot it back down the field to Brockton and keep the pressure off of their defense. Generally a risky strategy, but with a 3-0 lead and just under three minutes remaining in the second half, probably a safe one. And good job there by Blanchard to overpower Jamari Johnson. Well, Blanchard's going to have a throw in. Goes, tries to go to Garrity, ends up getting headed by Tiana Brooks. And now it'll be a throw in for the boxers. Two and a half to go. Three to nothing your score. Bridgewater Random on top of Brockton. And both teams now seemingly just wasting out the clock knowing the end result of this game. It's fairly inevitable, but Garrity still still pushing. She's looking for some more points in this game. As Caruso's gonna have a run down the far sidelines. And nice stop and go move there as she's going to cut it back to the middle of the field. And turns and tries to make a make a shot and it gets blocked. And Caruso really just trying to do it all herself at this point. Tiana Brooks plays it back up the field. It'll be headed out of bounds by Sarah Maloney of the Trojans. And Really just a, a tough game here for the Brockton Lady Boxers this evening. Unable to get anything going offensively. Credit the Bridgewater Rainham Trojans for packing it in, not allowing Caruso to beat them. And Brockton unable to help her out with any other goal scoring as Del Pico goes down the far sidelines. She's and tripped up, no whistle. That was good defense. She went for the ball there. Here's Garrity. She's got a streaking player who just knocked Del Pico down. And Carolyn Kelly... Broken up by Buckley, sent back across midfield. But Eamon, the story of this game, really all of the injuries to both Brockton and Bridgewater Random. Really a game of attrition, and, and let's be honest here. I mean, one team did a good job of managing the injuries, and another team simply was unable to overcome those deficits. The Trojans able to power through, losing one of their players early in the game, and a senior at that, which is always tough. But... Really just able to come back and start putting goals in the uh, in the net the second half. So we got about 30 seconds left in this game. The scoring summary, Samantha Sherrick with a couple of goals and Nicole Garrity with a goal and a couple of assists for Bridgewater Raynham, giving them the three to nothing lead that they currently hold. Brockton unable to crack the score sheet tonight, and Bridgewater Random will move to an 8-3 and 1 record, coming off a big win here at Brockton. And Brockton is one of the better teams in the state. Just unable to overcome the injuries to Ariana Almeida, Yasmini Texera, and late, very late uh, bloody nose by Ariana Sylvia. She spent a couple of minutes in the locker room. So Brockton will look to see if these players there, there is a long layover before their next game. The next game is next week on the 16th that is Tuesday night at Durfee. So that's a, a big league game and Brockton really has to step up their game, we might see a couple of players pulled up from the JV squad to fill some of the roster holes left by some of these injuries. 
And really just a troubling game for the boxers. This is one of those, you know, so-called tune-up games going back into league play. Like you said, Mad Dog, and to come out with an effort like this this evening is is quite troubling, you know, and they, they have the long layoff. There are going to have to be some adjustments made, and there are going to have to be some, you know, serious soul-searching by this Brockton Lady Boxers team and figure out what's been going wrong these past two games and how to remedy it. So the whistle sounds, and Bridgewater Random comes out with a big shutout over the Brockton Boxers. 3 to nothing. the final score from Marciano Stadium. Brockton has a couple of league games next week against Durfee and New Bedford. We'll have them for you on Brockton Community Access. Eamon, your final thoughts on the game. Tough game for Brockton. Understand they lost they lost players to injury, but you know this is a fact of, of sports. You're gonna you're gonna have people go out of the game, and you need to find a way to step up. Tori Viola did everything she could this evening to keep the Trojans off the scoreboard. Obviously, it wasn't enough. And offensively, Brockton's got to find a way to help Caruso out. I, she's a great player. She's a wonderful talent. Tremendous, tremendous scorer but no one can do it themselves, Mad Dog. She needs some help, and other ladies on this team need to step up and do so. You said it all right there. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access Sports, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. For my broadcast partner, Eamon Convey, we'll see you next game.